Okay, as I said, we were going to talk more about this audit committee. What is this audit committee and where does it fit into the bigger picture? Well, if you remember that graph, you see where it fits into the bigger picture. And what are some you know fun facts you got to know about the audit committee that you could be asked some questions about? Well, per SOX 2002, in order to address the issue of an inadequate board oversight, we had problems, right? We had problems in the past, but now we have this uh, wonderful uh, piece of legislation that is going to help us have better board oversight. So the public companies in the United States need to have an audit committee responsible for appointing, compensating, and overseeing the public accounting firm hired to audit the public company. And sure, quite a many of you are in that position where you are a uh, being a part of that audit team, being appointed, compensated. I, I hope hope well. Um, depends, you know, it depends. Uh, I guess you stick it in there, S stick uh, with it, right? Stick with your accounting firm, you know, get some raises, get promotions, um, hired to audit the public company. What does the, uh, does, what does the uh, public company not need to have? An internal auditor. So obviously many public companies, most probably are going to have an internal auditor, but SOX does not specifically require you to have an internal auditor. Just a note there, again, that could be a trick, right? Doesn't require you to have an internal auditor, but it does require you to have an audit committee that appoints and, and you know, delegates over that uh, public auditor, public uh, external auditor. Uh, does not need to have an independent board of directors. Now, the thing about this is the board of directors should actually not be independent. They sh should be dependent. I don't like how that sounds, but you know, they should be dependent. They should have a vested interest in the company, just like your your executives, right? Your uh, C-suite individuals, uh, the CEO, they should not be independent. They should very much care about how the company's doing. In theory, independent individuals, such as the, the external auditors, they're independent. They don't care how well the company's doing. Obviously, they do care because and they you know lose their client but um right they're independent they don't have ties to them uh, they can theoretically think without any regard of uh you know bias but we want the executives the board of directors we want them to have the company's best interest in mind per SOX 2002 audit committee members of an issuer are required to be independent not required to be anything else audit committee members are required to be independent. You will see some questions asking, oh, the audit committee member needs to be a uh, former executive or uh, an expert in the field or needs to be you know, super uh, knowledgeable in a certain area. Nope, they just need to be independent. Well, the board of directors does not have to be independent. Now, I mean, they can be independent, but like I said, you do want everyone who has a say in your company to uh, have a vested interest in your company, then they'll make the best decisions for that company. These board of directors are actually considered fiduciaries. And this is a term you may be familiar with. If you are not, will be now. Fiduciary is someone who has your best interest in heart. So um, just like your, you know, your parents or family members should have your best interest in heart. So too would a uh, you know a CPA or a lawyer or a doctor. Those are considered fiduciaries because now personally they might not really care about you, but professionally they are obligated to be a fiduciary to have your best interest in heart as a client. Now I, I hope your doctors and lawyers and accountants uh, very much care about you as an individual, but I cannot guarantee that. Okay, what else? The members of the board who are on the audit committee must otherwise be independent keeping that in mind. So the audit committee, now they're, it's saying otherwise independent. Now, I, this, these aren't my words. These are the words you got to know. What does that mean though? That means, okay, other than being a fiduciary to the company, meaning uh, you care for them, you, you have their best interest in mind, you must otherwise be independent. So uh, that really just lends itself to saying, okay, we can't get any crazy bonuses from the company, uh, compensation, compensated or affiliated person. You can't, as a board member, right, like get just crazy benefits from being a board member. Uh, you got to have your their best interest in mind. But, if, you know, if they're paying you ridiculous amounts of money to then influence the audit committee, to then influence the uh, public company, the public auditors, the external auditors, that's a that's kind of where the uh, thought process there goes. The audit committee financial expert. Well, here we go. Let's talk about the financial expert on that audit committee. Well, 
these public companies must have one or more of the members of the audit committee be a financial expert. So you can have one, you can have more. That's fine. I mean, generally questions will just mention one, but again, it doesn't really matter. That's not a big concern. And the issuer must disclose the existence of this one or more financial experts, these people, on the audit committee or the reason why, reason or reasons why the committee does not have a financial expert. Now that's super important. You'll see questions about that. Okay, obviously you mentioned if you have them, ideally you have that that person, right? That financial expert, cool. But if you don't, maybe the reason is, hey, we're getting a new one. We'll have one in a month or you know, there's just some reason, right? That would be the reason. You don't need to know <laughs> legitimate reasons why you would not have one. Just know that you need to disclose about them. What do you not need to disclose? That the financial expert is certified independent. The name, their address, anything about them. I've seen that as well. Uh, if the financial expert confirmed the audit opinion, just some other points to not need to worry about. Just worry about this. Focus. Eyes up here. Eyes up here. Uh, just the existence. And if they don't exist, why do they not exist? Moving on some more about this uh, financial expert. The committee financial expert must have experience with internal accounting controls through education or past experience, must have an understanding of GAAP and financial statements, an understanding of the audit committee functions, an understanding of the application of accounting principles, just some more points to memorize. Now, right here, does it say they need to be you know, a, a GAAP expert? No, they just need an understanding of it. They Do they need to have been a former audit committee member? Or, you know, just read these and memorize these as is. Yeah, they need to have experience with internal accounting controls, uh, but do they need to be a specific uh, like member or professor or like a certification of something? No, it doesn't say anything about that. It just says they need experience. So if you worked at a company for a year in their internal accounting department, technically that qualifies you. They do not need to have experience with uh, taxes or financial planning. And what can get tricky here is this is generally accepted accounting principles. Gas is generally accepted auditing standards. Now, this is both you know, US gas and US gap, but they're different. So you need to have an understanding of uh, gap. This is how you prepare the financial statements, but gas is how you audit something. So you don't need to have experience with that. That's just another trick that questions can and will throw at you maliciously. They want you to get these wrong, but you will not because you are a hardworking, intelligent individual. Hey there, are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material. We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.